Now, Paula, you are pretty darn famous in this area. <laughs> you have done a little bit of everything. Okay. And for my uninitiated friends here, I was wondering if you could just start off by telling them a little bit about what makes up a day in your life. Uh, sure. So, uh, I don't know if I'm famous. I don't think I would agree with that um, coded word, but I'll take <laughs> it, I guess. Um I've been the executive director here at the Tri-County Arts Council for the last two and a half years. Uh, born and raised in Olean, I'm very proud of living here in my hometown. Um, I tell people all the time that I could live anywhere, but I choose to live here. I am on a lot of different boards. I work with the Genesis House, the Friends of the Library. I'm the president and area governor for the Rotary. I'm the vice president for the Olean Music Boosters. I'm on the chamber board. Uh, I work with the um, Zantas as well. I'll be joining the Zanta Club in September, and I'm also on the Women's Auxiliary for the Pulaski Club. And I think that covers all of my monthly wow. meetings. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, but basically, Just dumbstruck. <laughs> there's yeah. so much. I- I'm sure I'm actually forgetting about it, one of them, but uh, basically a day of my life is just waking up and starting the wonderful grind of working for my community. If it's with Tri-County or doing something for the Genesis House or the Rotary or the Music Boosters or whatever it may be, it's just at the end of the day, I want to make only in the best place it can possibly be. And I think by just saying yes and putting as much effort in, in, in as possible, that's how we achieve those goals. You started by saying that you, you like telling people that you specifically chose to stay in only Can mm-hmm. you kind of elaborate on why that is? Because we've kind of seen a decline over recent years. And I, I want to hear more about why people are choosing to be here. Yeah. So, I, you know, I was born here in Olean, and I grew up, and I went to school here, and then I went off to Niagara University, and when I decided to come back, it was for very simple reasons. I think this is the greatest place to live. I mean, geographically, I think we are so beneficial, not only being close to Buffalo or Erie or Pittsburgh or New York City or Toronto. Like, we have the most perfect weather um, year-round. We have four seasons. We have Ellicottville if you like to ski. We have Buffalo if you want to go see a sporting event. We have all of these wonderful things, and yet we still get a community where you know your neighbors' names, you know their dogs' names, um, maybe their cats if they get lost, and you just get to be part of a community. You walk into your bank and they know who you are. I don't think you get that if you live in Rochester. I really honestly don't think you do. Um, Rochester might be great for some people, but for me, I love living in a place where I can go to Community Bank and they know my name, they know my parents' name. I when I went to Brian's father for uh, veterinary services, everyone knew my dog's names. I usually started the conversation by talking about OG or bear and they knew who I was. Mm -hmm. It's a great place because people know who you are. Um, If I go back to saying like, I don't believe I'm in any means famous, but like people know me because they see me on Facebook or social media or in the paper or Mm -hmm. what have you. But d- does that happen, like, in Baltimore? Probably, probably yes, if you do it for bad reasons. But for good <laughs> things, probably not. So mm-hmm. we have the best place we could possibly live because we have access to everything, but still that small-town charm. Yeah. So I just appreciate it. Well, so as um, maybe from the perspective of a, of a lay individual that goes to work, comes home and has a hard enough time making dinner. How do you, how do you do everything that you do? <laughs> um, well, it's constant. Um, it's every single day. It's being organized and as efficient as possible. And I don't make dinner, so it's <laughs> perfect. Um, I probably wouldn't be able to make dinner if you wanted anything other than cold c- Campbell soup. So it's. <laughs> You know, it's having that support system. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brian knows my husband, Al. He's a very um, community-centered as well. So it's easy when you have someone helping you with those finer details. Like, 
hmm, who's making dinner tonight? It's never me is the answer. But <laughs> just making sure that you check the box. Like, did I do something today for Rotary? Yes. Yeah. Did I do something today for Genesis House? Yes. And it's having that schedule that mostly five days a week, I'm doing something for all of the organizations that I mentioned earlier. How do you find the energy to do that, honestly? Because I could <laughs> use that, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, I have, I have two sayings here um, mm-hmm. at Tri-County. I will travel anywhere for art and coffee. <laughs> so having a coffee shop like Rocket Cup or La Dolce Vita next to me is very beneficial for me. I will always take a free cup of coffee from anyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> and my second slogan is that I will always say yes, mm. because I really do feel that's how progress is made. And with that progress, you get that energy through being excited about the next project, the next thing, whatever that may be. Mm. And that's just the energy that uh, fuels you. I'm not going to lie and tell you that every single day I'm working at a 10. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm at a three. Sure. There are some days where I don't leave the house because I don't want to. But on the days where I'm a 10, I just have to make sure that I'm putting all my energy into what I want to achieve that day if it's for Tri-County or any of the other organizations that I work with. Have you always been like this? <laughs> <laughs> um, Have you always been insane, he means? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, um, probably um, <laughs> from my from growing up, watching my parents do all of the things that they did. Um, you know, when I was in elementary school, this was a long time ago at Eastview, we would collect, speaking of Campbell soup labels, really? we would collect the um, soup labels and my mother would organize them and cut them and send them in. And she was able to provide the first playground at Eastview wow. Elementary just through soup labels. That's incredible. Wow. And I was in fourth grade and she would come <laughs> in and she would like cut them and organize them and you had to like, the, Holy cow. the um, cream of mushroom had to go one place and the tomato had to go in another. And that's probably where this all started. But my, <laughs> my parents were always community minded. It was never something that was ever spoken about, but it was always something that was seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, my father not only worked for the high school and the school district, but he also had a construction company. So if something needed to be done, for example, um, during one winter, the secretary's at the high school's dog passed away and they wanted to bury the dog in the backyard. Well, it was frozen, the ground. So he took his backhoe up and did it. Hmm. And that was, it was nothing that was ever spoken about, but you saw how it was to be a member of the community. You say yes when someone needs something, you take the opportunity when it is presented to you. And that is just how I've always been from being a child to now as an adult. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's hard to process. I I mean, you know, someone who's like the exact opposite, it's like, wow, that's all the stuff that I can't do at all. That's, (laughs) uh, yeah, that's like, whatever, give give me some of that. Sure. (laughs) It it starts honestly with just having the mindset of saying yes. Um, if someone has an idea, hey, let's do this. Great, let's do it. Um, hey, you want to, you know, put a art gallery next door in the First National Bank? Yes, I do. I got that phone call and that email earlier this year. I said yes to the project, and now we're using that space. Um, the next crazy idea that walks through the room, let's say yes and see where it goes. This morning, I was talking to a friend, and she said, you know, it's a really great idea for a class. Beer steins made out of pottery. You come in, make the beer stein, you come back to glaze it, and then we all meet at Four Mile. Yes, why Mm. not? Let's do it. That sounds great. That's that's a wonderful idea. But it just starts with having that energy of yes, because as soon as you say no, it's dead. As soon as someone says, no, we're not going to do that project. No, that's a dumb idea. No, we can't do that. It is dead in the water, and you're never going to see it again. So if you say yes, and it might not work out to the achievement you want it to be, but as long as you say yes in the beginning, you get to go to the next step and the next step and the next step. 
So, like, how do you manage your expectations? You're saying yes and to everything that comes your way. Mm -hmm. So, inevitably, not everything is going to, you know, pan out the way you want it to, expect it to, yeah. dream it will. Yeah. How do you deal right. with that? Well, you, you take the one day to grieve that the project is dead, and then you move on to the next one. Um, sometimes they work out great, and sometimes they don't. And that's okay. Because I'm not, there's not like a hall of fame for um, nonprofit work that I'm working to get voted into. Um, but if I can have at least one project be a success out of 10, I say, hey, the world is better because of that one. Um, a great example of that is our last mural that we did here in Olean at the sports locker. The day we opened and dedicated the mural at the William O. Smith Rec Center. I'm driving home, I pass Sports Locker, there is a blank black wall. At the red light of 7th Street, I text the two people that were involved with the Rec Center and I say, hey, wouldn't this be a great wall for a mural? And they said yes, the business owner said yes, and it worked out. That doesn't mean every blank wall in Olean is going to be a mural, but at least that one became an idea with expectations and then completion. There's been other murals that have come to us that just hasn't worked out. So you just kind of let that one day of it to die, mourn its existence, and then you move on to the next one. Hmm. So that kind of leads into a question I was kind of you know, thinking about how to ask, and I guess the simplest way is, you know, especially since you are so active and involved in so many different parts of our community at large, um, who are some of the people in our community who are helping to keep our artistic creative scene alive? So I guess deep down inside, if I had to answer that question, I would say it's the very people that are here at the Tri-County Arts Council. It's our board members, it's our staff, it's our artisans, it's our members. They're keeping the culture and arts alive here in a rare, very rural part of New York State. It is not easy to have an arts organization way out here in western New York. There are a lot of challenges and there's a lot of bumps in the road. But at the end of the day, you want to find those people who want to work with you. And that's something that I've spent a lot of time in in the last two and a half years, developing those relationships, because before this, I was a public school teacher. I had no idea what I was doing the first day I started this job. Some people might argue that I still don't, but... <laughs> <laughs> but two and a half years in, I have built relationships with artisans throughout Western New York, art organizations throughout New York State, and we just keep building if you want to do something around here, you need partners. That might be the Quick Center at St. Bonaventure. It might be ASI out of Erie County. It might be a local artisan out of Allegheny County. You just want to make sure that you have someone working with you. And with that comes this idea and the process and the development. And then you just keep it going. For example, we have our second annual art market happening in Ellicottville on Labor Day. At the end of the day, there's two people running that show, myself and Sean Huntington, and we have 20 people that we're organizing. Now, in the most delicate way, organizing artisans is like <laughs> organizing a herd of cats. But you keep them all together, you give them their requirements, you give them their tents and their spaces, and you let them shine. And they know how to bring the people in, showcase their work. And, and that, without a doubt, I am going to have one person during Labor Day weekend pull me aside and go, I didn't know we had all these people who were you know, artists. And I'm like, well, yeah, we do. We have great artists. We have world-class artisans here. And without them and the staff and my board and all of the other partners, none of it would work together. Following that line of thinking, then, yeah, part of the story you talked about was, you know, who's been there to help since the beginning and whatnot. Can we kind of look back then to those two years ago when you guys started? Sure. Uh, from the outside looking in, I'll just be frank, betting on Olean, businesses keeping 
their doors open is kind of a losing bet most of the time. Mm -hmm. I was a little skeptical at first, but I kept a close eye throughout all these years, and you guys have persisted. How did you guys manage to do that, given all of the problems we had a couple of years ago, and, and, and how has and it been going since? Have. Yeah, so the, when I first started in April of 22, was not the best time to start a new <laughs> job or a new yeah. career. Um, I still remember that the fence was up because they were still working on the first national bank mm -hmm. or um, Hanny Man or yeah, Hanny Manny, if you want to call it that. Um, and it was like the fence just stayed forever because it was a construction site, yeah. but it was also like in it was a good metaphor of like the impeding of there's a fence right there, basically blocking my parking spots, and mostly my front door Yeah, for, you know, April of 22. Yeah. And it came about that the previous administration took out a business loan during the pandemic, and it kept us alive. It kept us, well, able to have the lights on. And with that investment, we were able to continue. And a lot, a lot of organizations survived nonprofit world got real real tough during mm -hmm. the pandemic and some people didn't survive it and others did and it came from being able to work with the administration before me um, the landlord the board and the community because if the community values arts and culture they need to support it mm -hmm. and it was tough going there in april of 22 but every month it got a little bit better and a little bit easier and the fence eventually came down and we expanded in um, may of 23 into this room that we sit and the clay room and then uh, may of 24 the coffee shop opened and now all things are happening throughout this building and then also this year we started at first national bank so essentially the entire block has art in it I had a joke last month. If someone bought me the five star building, I could put art in there too. But <laughs> that's a little you could greedy. do a little drive through window. Yeah, yeah. drive through viewing. <laughs> not yeah. much, not much. I just need one more building to complete the block. Mm -hmm. But it really comes down to having the community support you, and that can be said to any business here in Olean. Mm -hmm. um, about eight years ago, two of my friends and I had this idea of starting a Facebook group. It's called State and Union. And that. every day we post really positive things about Olean, but primarily the businesses. We want to support our businesses. We want Rocket Cup and La Dolce and Singer and Sports Locker and Angie's and the Beef and Barrel and any other local owned business to survive that comes with people walking through their door and purchasing something from them. If it's your pizza, if it's your, you know, sewing machine, if it's going to the local florist, we want these things to survive because they make everything better. I mean, Family Dollar certainly has their place <laughs> in our economy, but do we really need 19 of them? Probably not. But I understand why they exist as well. But we also have to kind of balance that at the end of the day. But it comes down to having the community decide where do they want to spend their dollar. And we hope through showcasing local businesses on you know social media, which has kind of become the default like front page of the world, that we are able to do that. Since you're so involved with so much that's going on in the community, do you see any patterns that you that you like to see that you don't like to see? <sighs> wow. Um, I I always feel like we have different waves of positivity through Olean. Mm -hmm. Like we get really really excited about one certain thing. And then it drops off. And mm. then that negativity kind of creeps in. And by no means am I Pollyanna. I understand that there are problems in Olean. But I don't know how I can solve those. Mm -hmm. I can showcase the positive things. I can work with the Genesis House to help homeless. I can help in the library to provide free programming. 
for literacy. And those are the things that I can do to crack down on slumlords. I don't know what I, I don't know what I have to offer the world in that. So I try to focus on that pattern of positivity. And then we just wait for that negativity to fall off. Mm. There's always those certain things like roundabouts or the mall project that people just, they get all up in arms about and then give them a few days and they move on to their next thing. And it's not to say that those things don't have real consequences here in Olean, but at the end of the day, we got to just understand that the roundabouts are necessary because they gave us the ability to pay for the stuff underneath the road. Mm-hmm. The, exactly. So, yeah, some people don't like them. Yeah, maybe you have to wait at 3 o'clock a little bit longer than you used to have to wait at the red lights because no one remembers waiting at the red lights either. Not really. But you have now new underneath the road pipes and structure and all of the things that we're just waiting for them to explode because <laughs> sh- the pipes are old here in Olean and we have to fix them eventually. Uh, it takes a lot to run a city. It just doesn't happen, you know, above Boom. ground. Again, Oof. exactly. And, you know, to the credit to our city leaders, they're doing the best they possibly can with what they have. And are they perfect? No. But I don't know anyone who lives in a perfect society either. So it's just let's focus on what we can take care of and then – We'll figure out how to fix the rest. Is there anything coming up that you're really excited about that you want to share with the broader community, if it is at Tri-County Arts or just a part of the bigger community at large? So at Tri-County, we have a lot of the things that I've already mentioned. We have our Ellicottville show coming up at the end of the month. We have another opening at the First National Bank. Um, If you haven't had a chance to go to the First National Bank, it is absolutely gorgeous inside. Um, That building sat so dormant through most of my life. I had never been in there while it was a real bank. Um, But it still has that classic feel of all of the bank vaults and most of the marble. And you it's wonderful that we're able to have an art gallery, an art studio there. Um, But there's a lot of other things that are happening in the community. You know, we have Beat City working on their fundraising. We have the Pink Pumpkin Project selling their pumpkins currently. We have the city working on a new roundabout, which, again, is annoying because construction, traffic. But I always try to remember, it's like if you're going to remodel your kitchen, there's always that, like, three-week period that you can't use your kitchen. So soon, we will be out of that phase. But we have wonderful things happening here in Olean at the farmer's market or at different businesses, and it really just showcases how positive we are making those, step for, those steps forward. What would you, if you met someone who's trying to get more involved in the community, what, what kind of advice would you give them? So it's so funny. A friend of mine on Tuesday texted me, And she said, what's the music boosters? (laughs) Um, And I said, oh, it's a, you know, it's an organization at the high school that, you know, promotes the music department. And they work, you know, it's just a volunteer um, organization that does different things with the music students. And our first meeting is, is September 16th. So you should come on down. But that's what I would suggest. Join a service organization. Now, granted, I'm in a lot of them. Mm. <laughs> uh, working with the Music Boosters or the Rotary or Zanta or, you know, the Boy Scouts. Pick one. And that's a great way to get involved in the community. Um, just today, Bonna's response went to the Genesis House and worked on painting the um, second floor of the family shelter. And because that painting is now done... A family can now move in sooner. So join Bonner Response. I have worked with um, Jim Mahar many times building, well, a ramp. Uh, When I say building, (laughs) I mean I was more there supervising. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at carrying things and making sure things are tidy. You probably (laughs) shouldn't give me a saw, though. It's My entire family has been in construction my entire life. I couldn't use a table saw if you 
scared me too. But join an organization. Um, become a member here at Tri-County. Take a class. Go to a program at the library. Go to the park on Thursday night and sit there and listen to music. Again, we have great weather here. Let's not ruin a Thursday night by not going and enjoying it. If you can't make the Thursday, go to Portville and Wednesday. If you can't make the Wednesday in Portville, go to Tuesday in uh, Cuba. There's so many different things you can do in this uh, region of, that we have, and that makes you more part of the community. Because once you're there at whatever meeting or organization you choose, you talk to someone, and you learn something. And you're like, wow, that's so cool. Didn't know that happened. Golly. And then you go to the next thing and the next thing. And then you start having friends and whatever it may be. But it's so important, especially since the pandemic, if we can just keep those third places. We have home, we have work, but what's the third place we go? If you want to be a part of the community, find your third place. What, what, what kind of advice do you have for those that might say, hey, there's, there's not much to do in the area, so I don't want to <laughs> be here? Tell them to look around. <laughs> um, just for Tri-County, we have 37 classes happening between now and the end of the year. And we have very few classes in December because of the holidays. Mm. So when someone tells me there's nothing to do here in Olean, I shake my head at them and like, that's not true. It's completely not true. We have so many things. Take a clay class. Take the gel printing class. Go to the library. They have um, free activities almost weekly, if not every night of the week. Okay, maybe not every night. Look at their ca calendar first. But go out and be a little daring, and don't be afraid of failure either. Like, I have taken a pottery class. I made the best pumpkin in the class. Everyone nod. Mm. I did. Best pumpkin. I saw that. Yes. <laughs> it was purple. Um, but <laughs> as, as pumpkins are. <laughs> as they should be. But, like, it, I know it wasn't the best, but I had fun, and that was the whole point. And if you're, you're not going to be, like, successful at everything that you do, but I still had a really wonderful time. Um, and I think people just need to be a little bit more daring in what they want to do. Like, go to Thursday in the Park. Sit next to someone you don't know and say hello to them. And don't be afraid if they say hello back. Um, you don't need to be a stranger to everyone. We can have more community involvement. There are plenty of things happening in Olean. Saturday morning at the farmer's market. Go around and, you know, that lady who has the baked goods or the man who has the meat or the cheese or whatever it may be, Ask them about their process. Talk to them for a minute. They love it. They're like any person at the food market is like any other artist I've ever met. They want to talk about their process. So how do you make the cheese? I don't, know. I don't know how to make cheese, but that person does. Be comfortable and put yourself in a spot that might make you uncomfortable. And that's how you find out all the things that are happening here in Olean. I, I love that. I, I try to live by it all the time. Just ask people genuine questions about what they love, mm -hmm. and you will be showered with by the world. <laughs> Terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> Social interaction. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. If, like Some of those might be examples of being too out on the ledge. Mm -hmm. Find something that you're comfortable with. Like Let's say you like board games. Um, my stepson Holden has a group that meets at Rocket Cup Coffee on Tuesdays and they play different games. Maybe that's your thing. Start your own group, but just expand one step be be um, beyond your comfort level and then just find all the th wonderful things that are happening in our region. Mm. Yeah. I didn't convince him with the board game thing. <laughs> no, no, I'm just... You know, I'm thinking that's a, that one step. Yeah, just, just one, one step. One that's, step. Yeah. I think I've got probably my last question for this. So, okay. you know, uh, 
let's let's go into hypothetical land. Um, mm-hmm. Paula Bernstein, God Queen of Olean. Oh if Lord. you could change, <laughs> if what's you're what, the mayor. What if, you you are now the mayor. <laughs> God mayor even. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If it could be any one thing that you would choose to fix right away or change or want to get behind more. Maybe I should add the caveat besides just the arts, because mm-hmm. I know that would be the first place I would want to invest yeah. to. Uh, there would be pu- there would be public arts everywhere, but because go ahead. frankly, you know, I I I'm one of those uh, self flagellating individuals that'll sit through the county, not the county, the city meetings mm-hmm. on stream the whole way through, and I've been noticing a growing sentiment for some new blood, for you know younger generations that mm-hmm. can kind of see what's happening and want to be the w- force against it. You sound kind of like one of those. Mm-hmm. So what would you do? What would you change if you could do anything? If I could change anything in Olean that doesn't have to do with arts, mm-hmm. I would have more family-oriented activities. Mm-hmm. Um, we have wonderful wonderful parks here in Olean, and I just don't think they get used enough. From the park down at Fornis to Oak Hill Park to Bordenville Park, there there's great things, but I just don't think we utilize them enough. Um, and then also, like in the the city center, the number streets, there's really not a park there at all. Yeah. There's Oak Hill Park on Fourth Street, and then there's not another park until you get into Allegheny. Mm-hmm. So I would kind of, well, they do have Marcus Park, but they're, they're developing like that a, one into something it's more different. More like a baseball field, isn't well, it? Well, it, they're taking the baseball field and they're moving, they're working with in tandem. Okay. Um, but that one right now is kind of just... It's kind of just a piece of field. Yeah, it's kind of forgotten about, but I know mm-hmm. that they're developing into something. But it would be nice to have more things for family-oriented activities. If it's parks, is it if it's just kind of more city programming for the whole family? Mm-hmm. I lo- like I've mentioned um, music in the park many times. I think sometimes that schedule angles a little older, mm-hmm. and maybe once a month we should have maybe a band that's a little bit younger mm-hmm. and see what happens. <laughs> now, granted, the, everyone who's in the park, they're talented, they're we skilled. We love the square dancers. We love it. Yeah, we love all types. <laughs> but everything tends to be a little bit older in the age range. Yeah. And maybe we could focus it a little bit l- more towards, like, an early family. Someone in their, like, late 20s, early 30s that might not be thrilled with, you know, 1960s music Mm -hmm. nothing wrong with it it's great i would love to snap my finger to it but have (laughs) something maybe a little bit younger Mm -hmm. and you know that's something that beats city i know they're definitely developing their youth programming but have like that young showcase in the park and be like hey let's really help those young musicians i guess i did turn it into arts but (laughs) we'll let it slide i like musicians too but just (laughs) Focusing more on young families, because I think if we can get younger families to stay here, Mm -hmm. people stay here forever. (laughs) Because once they want to stay here. Yeah. Yeah. If we if we make them want to stay here by giving them the things that they want. And it has been proven not just by me saying it, but by years of research that people want to be able to do activities with their family. Well, let's give them that. Yeah. And I think that's something that the city is trying to do, especially with, you know, the roundabouts and developing war vets and doing different projects within tandem. They're trying to find those things. I just think maybe the community needs to support them a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, when are we getting a wood shop? A what? A wood shop. A wood shop? Yeah. What do you mean a wood shop? For for uh, working with wood, like a lathe, oh. bandsaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, I don't know what he's talking. About. I don't know. Not, this I isn't had, an I had thing no for us. plans on a wood shop. Um, 
Uh, you go, you're going to have to get that from somebody else. <laughs> okay, okay. Did, Good did, use did, of your last question, just like Noah said. I, I want a wood shop. <laughs> um, I don't know anyone around here as a wood shop. Keep like talking that. about your wood shop. I'm trying to coalesce my last <laughs> question in my head. So, uh, so I was while, so thrown by a wood shop. Like, oh, I, I could see shop. it. I saw, I could hear the train go off the rail. <laughs> like what? <laughs> good one, who Ryan? doesn't want a Who doesn't want a good wood there shop? Five people and, and cold soup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I, I will refer you to one of our woodworkers, Michael Smith, who is mm. a retired teacher from Allegheny Limestone. Oh, I love him. He's him probably so much. got a wood shop in his basement. You can go to his house. Got there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got all the lathes and band saws you could ever want. <laughs> so maybe kind of tying this back to a little what you said earlier, you kind of mentioned, you know, there's like, we go through these waves of like positivity and then negativity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I really like, I felt that because as someone who's lived here all my life, who's seen things go up all they looked like they could be good and then kind of get really bad again and everybody's Mm -hmm. like this sucks and then it's like maybe yeah maybe no so um what do you think the answer is how do we reach some kind of stability where it's not just oh it's you know good for a little bit and then we're always pissed off how do we get to a place where we're maybe just on the steady like hey Mm -hmm. things are on the up i think I really do think overall, if I think about the last 20 years of Olean history, we have steadily moved up. (laughs) We are making that climb higher and higher and higher. But it it does come back to what I was saying earlier about saying yes. You know, say yes to the opportunities that someone wants. And it might not work out. Not everything works out. But I can't imagine that Olean is any different than any other city in the world. And we all have those experiences of negativity, and then we always find that positively again. It is that cycle of just, I think, human beings. We're just like that. It's just nature. It's Mm. just nature. But at the end of the day, say yes to that crazy idea of, you know, if I go back to Marcus Park and someone said, hey, let's put, let's work with in tandem and put an all access playground there. Okay, let's do it because they, and how do we do that? Well, we use that field usually for adult um, baseball or softball. So we have to make a field down in Fornis. Well, those things don't like just happen. Like I think earlier you went poof. Poof. It doesn't happen (laughs) like that. It takes a lot of planning throughout the city, working with a lot of different departments, a lot of different um, funders and partners. But someone had that idea first. Hey, let's make a park that is dedicated to all children being able to access all things. Okay. Say yes, make the plan, organize it, develop it, achieve it. And hopefully we do that enough where the negativity will come back because it always will. You know, Strowman's will close down. This will close down. Jesser Rand's kaput. But we said yes, and now there's someone else there. Yeah. And because we said yes, and it brought those new things in. You know, if we take it outside of Olean to like a countywide, someone said yes to the cheese factory coming to Franklinville. In fact, somebody said no to it in Allegheny County. There you go. Say yes. And then look at all the positive things that are now happening in Franklinville. Yeah. You know, all of the new people there, all of the new jobs. At the end of the day, it comes down to money and people. We need both of those things to make everything work. And not everything's going to be successful, and some things are going to have ripple effects that we can't really ever expect. But at the end of the day, if you can say yes and have the money and the people, we're going to continue that growth to more positive things here in Olean and Cataracts County.